All right, March Madness is on pause Monday through Wednesday, and I realized I had far too much fun watching the games over the weekend, so I decided to subject myself to the greatest pain known to man, watching a trailer for a new Disney Star Wars show. And you're probably a masochist too, since you clicked on this video, so please, come, suffer through this with me. Close your eyes. Ooh, I love guided meditation. Although, knowing Disney Star Wars, they're about to give me a wet willy with embalming fluids. Your eyes can deceive you. Hey, that's true. I once met a girl when I was operating on four hours of sleep for a week straight and thought she was a stunner. Saw her again and immediately called my eye doctor. And my witch doctor. We must not trust them. Like, at all? We don't trust our eyes at all? That seems extreme. Like the kind of advice you'd get from someone who worked for Harvey Weinstein or something. Oh. Tell me what comes into your mind. 73% of Americans believe in soulmates. 74% of Americans believe in God. The majority of those Americans that believe in God identify as Christian. Based on a small poll I took in college, only about 27% of Christians believe in soulmates. That means there are probably millions of Americans who believe there is one other person uniquely suited to be their partner in life who also don't believe in a God to help guide them to that person. Why? What came into your mind? Life. Balance. Oh yeah, that, that, that's what I meant to say, too. Yeah. I see fire. I see power! I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody. That's me! Right. right! Why didn't she use the force on her attacker earlier? Also, this moron tried to kill a Jedi with a knife. <laughs> what was this, some sort of incompetent Sith assassin? No hand-to-hand -hand altercation where one combatant is a Jedi should ever last longer than it takes the Jedi to pin the other person against a wall or something. Yay, more incompetent action scenes. Someone is killing Jedi. Oh no, is Ryan Johnson back? Or J.J. Abrams? Or Dave Filoni? Or, I guess it's just all of Disney? which has done more damage to Jedi than Order 66. Again with the knife. That better not be a Jedi this person is trying to kill with a knife. Head on too, it's not like she even snuck up behind her. It doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. What happened? Oh no, is this another new force ability that's gonna make all the other Jedi that didn't use it look like chumps? By the way, I'm about to release a video going into how Disney has completely ruined the Force. So you can subscribe if you want to know when it drops. I sensed darkness. Worth pointing out here, this show takes place 100 years before The Phantom Menace. That means two things. One, they're almost definitely going to show us Yoda, which means they're almost definitely going to assassinate Yoda. Two, remember when Kiati said in that movie? Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. They were around a hundred years ago, you idiot. Didn't you watch The Acolyte on Disney Plus? Which you can bundle with a Hulu and ESPN Plus subscription for the low starting price of $14.99 a month? Star Wars saved my life. Like. Pretty weird then that you seem to have not seen one of the movies before writing a show that will be a prequel to said movie. You hackneyed lying Harvey Weinstein enabling sack of maggots. You're a pinheaded, cross eyed sack of maggots. You know, this character they keep showing could be really cool. Unless they refuse to develop her beyond strong female character. But come on, that would never happen. Did this chick just attack the same Jedi with a knife again? What is going on? This isn't about good or bad. 
This is about power and who is allowed to use it. What is that? That's a red lightsaber, which the Sith use. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. No one knows what you're talking about, you idiot. But this is the line from the trailer that says it all. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. I feel like I don't even need to watch this show. Leslie Headland, and there is a lot of land being taken up by that head, man, has said this show will be a commentary on American society, culture, and politics. Just what we were all clamoring for, I know. She has also said she identified with villains growing up because she's queer or something. Now, I'll be honest. I got a degree in electrical engineering, not gender studies. That means I have a skill set that is actually useful to society and have no idea what in the alphabet soup queer coded means. I do gather, however, that apparently the most important aspect of Leslie's identity is her sexual preference. I also know that people who use that sort of language tend to be beholden to a certain cultish ideology. By the way, when I say cultish ideology, I mean an ideology that gives a prescription for how to view every conflict that arises in the world. That line? This isn't about good or bad. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? Could serve as the launching point for an interesting exploratory narrative. Except that Leslie Headland is, by all available evidence, an ideologue. And ideologues are boring. Being an ideologue means that I can replace you with your cultish ideology. It means that I know how you'll interpret just about any situation and represent any subject simply by knowing the ideology that guides you. And this doesn't only go for leftist ideologues, they're just the ones working on Hollywood projects. I think I know how Leslie Headland sees the world. I'm betting she sees situations through the lens of an oppressor versus oppressed narrative. And how she determines who is the oppressor and who is the oppressed is based not on the actual actions taken by the two parties, but rather on a hierarchy of intersectional identity. She is of the crowd that insisted the definition of racism needed to be changed to be racism plus institutional power, so that ideologues could better claim that only white people can be truly racist. So, I'll tell you what I'm betting this show will be about, and we can revisit these bets when the show ends in June or July or whatever and see if I was right. And we'll do so in a betting format to fuel my sports gambling addiction. If you don't understand how betting odds work, I'll include helpful visuals for this section. Minus 175 odds, it's going to explore some Sith or Dark Side Force users and suggest that maybe they're not actually that bad. Not because their actions and beliefs aren't bad but simply because they're not the ones in power. They're the oppressed. I'll set a plus 200 bet on a comparison of the Jedi or Republic to colonizers in some way, even odds that a younger Jedi, likely high on the intersectional hierarchy, will learn about the Sith Acolytes and sympathize with their perspective. And of course, we'll check off the diverse character checkboxes. Minus 1,000 odds, there will be a couple LGBT characters who will receive barely any character development outside of being LGBT. And finally, minus 500 odds, the relative attitude taken towards the character portrayals will go something like this. Women, in general, will be portrayed in a better light than men. Characters of American minority races, not sure what they'll do with aliens, will be portrayed in a better light than white characters. LGBT characters will be portrayed in a better light than racial minority characters, and any LGBT characters who are also racial minorities will be the gold standard. You can tell me in the comments if you think those odds are fair and how much you'd be willing to put down based on them. I used to be able to say I don't care about politics in movies and TV shows, or even in music. Now, unfortunately, it feels like I do, but I still don't. Like I always have, I care about the quality of writing. But the constant infusion of politics and social ideas in movies and TV shows has been so pervasive and one-sided that it's been detrimental to the storytelling. And the problem goes deeper now than the writing being bad. It's predictable. For all the millions of problems with The Last Jedi, I can honestly say it wasn't what I expected to see when I walked into the theater. Now it is predictable. It's 
boring. Being an ideologue makes you boring. So the acolyte will be boring. Hey, if you want to suffer through the sludge being pumped out by modern Hollywood together while making the most of it by mocking women and minorities or whatever Disney is going to say about the people who end up not liking this show, then like and subscribe to the channel and enjoy the ramblings of the sauce himself. And if you don't, fine, I'll just sneak into your house and rub habanero peppers on your toilet paper. What? Oh. Uh, HR says for legal reasons, I must clarify that that's a joke or whatever. See ya!